So here's my cast of characters. You got the catfish, mayonnaise, salt, onion powder, panko breadcrumbs, and cornstarch. I rinsed and dried off the catfish because most catfish is infused with a whole bunch of salt water. And as you saw in the package, there was nothing added and it had low sodium. So nothing really squeezed out of it other than just the water that I rinsed it with. And this is what's left behind when you mix panko breadcrumbs with cornstarch. It gets a little smoky. And I know it doesn't look like much, but that's mayonnaise mixed with onion powder and salt. And the reason that I add cornstarch to the breadcrumbs is I learned way back a few years ago on TV on the cooking shows that it really makes whatever you fry very crispy, whether you cook it in the pan with just a little oil or deep fry it. Okay, so I battered two pieces of fish. I'm gonna let them sit overnight in the fridge. Uh, that way the batter sticks much better. I've learned that over time as well. And then this piece is gonna be baked in the toaster oven that you see behind here. So stay tuned, we'll cook it up next. And this is my little Christmas helper here. He's got his little light comes on different colors. Isn't that cute? So let's crack open this uh, deep fried catfish. Let's see how it did. Look at that. That looks good. Nice and juicy inside. All right, let's see how the catfish is fried. It's still hot. <laughs> so like I had mentioned, I'm gonna cook the catfish two ways. The deep fried was amazing, not muddy at all. Delicious, clean flavor. I think that seems to be the common theme with American farm-raised catfish versus, say, Asian farm-raised. I, I like them both, but I know that there's some drawbacks to sometimes different ways that people farm-raise their catfish. Okay, now we're gonna bake a piece in the toaster oven and see how that turns out. Stay tuned. Okay, so for the second way of cooking this particular brand of catfish, so I'm gonna go ahead and oil it. I want to make sure the oil is down on the pan as well. Get a good covering. And with my clean hand, I'm just going to throw a little bit of crab seasoning on it. 
Not too much. Just enough to give it flavor. You can always add, but you can't take away. So we're gonna go ahead and throw it in the uh, toaster oven, see how it does. I've got it at 350, got it at 10 minutes. It could be done before or after that, but we're gonna go ahead and keep an eye on it. Hit that old start button and convection because supposedly it makes everything cook more evenly. Oh, it's looking good. Sizzling up a storm. All right, let's cut into it and see how it is. It's nice and juicy looking. Yum, yum. Looks good. Looks very juicy, tender. It's really good. I used a crab seasoning on the baked and then my own kind of concoction on the fried, as you saw, but I think the fried is definitely better. Just somehow it seemed to hold the juices a little bit better. This looks really juicy. It is juicy. And it'd probably be amazing on the grill, like an outdoor grill, but it was so windy today I couldn't do it. Like 50 mile an hour winds here in Virginia. Um, but it's very juicy. But it's almost got almost like, a, almost like a chicken breast type of texture to it, where I kind of like the softer, different feel that you get from deep fried. It would be an honor to have you on board, maybe even subscribe, maybe even hit that like button. And thank you so much for watching.